And we have to make a motion to get underway. Yes. Okay, is there a motion to begin um, hearing our first application? May I, is there someone to raise to raise that? I make Good. a motion. Let's begin our first hearing. Okay. And second. second it. Great. By Joyce. We didn't do the roll call. And we didn't do the pledge of allegiance, but I guess it'll be next. We can do that right now. All right. I'll, I'll take roll. Okay. Um, Joyce Cole here. Mark Garbowitz. I'm, I'm Dan Garfield. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was looking at Mark sorry. and saying you. Mark goes Paul. I'm sorry. Here. Captain Wilson. Here. Isaac Tahara. Here. And Great. Jared Garfield. All right. Yes, I hear. And okay. Then we'll stand and pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so with that in my yeah, well, now we can begin the application. Can we call it up on the screen? We sure can. Okay, so this is for. It, I think it's pretty simple. It's, it's an exhaust hood in the back of a building that faces Main Street. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And um, I don't know if anybody, I guess we should go through every page just in case other people haven't looked at it yet. That's the front of the building, right? Yeah, that's the front. Okay. And then that's where the hood's going to go. Is that right? The air shaft's going to be there? Yeah, that's on there to the roof. Yeah. So then you have a drawing which shows the elevation. Is, is there a difference between that picture, excuse me, and yep. the one above? Is there some reason why we have two pictures of that? Is there something you wanted to show us? No, just a better angle. It's All right, it's fine. Another angle of it. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 go down, in. go down. That one gets sketched in. Yeah, yeah. Go, go back. So let's, yeah, stop. There it is. You put that in. Somebody put that in. Uh, and then there's another drawing, though, that's hard lined. If you keep going. Is it the. Ladder, maybe? No, that's the duct that you're the he's representing the shaft. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's a nice idea to do that. Okay, but there's a better drawing, a more precise drawing. Uh, so, location plan, DOB notes, and Roof plan. in the back, and it's the elevation. Side, yeah, and that's the elevation. Keep going down somewhere. There is the elevation, about so is the plan, and that's the elevation. Yeah, that's it. okay. And um, we don't, I thought there was an elevation. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, there it is, is right yeah. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, okay. And as far the building is, how deep is it? I don't think you could ever see it from the street. And it's, um, I don't, it, what's the uh, shaft going to be? Is it is it just going to be galvanized steel facing the outside? Uh, yeah, you can paint any color you want to paint. Do we, do we want to make a, a motion to consider painting it a color? Just leave the natural galvanized steel, yeah. not the galvanized. Yeah. You're not going to see it, right? Except in here in the backyard, but to me, galvanized okay. I mean, does anyone have an opinion? Yeah, okay, fine. So, galvanized there, is, there is a right? building in relation to the other store. Well, there's going to be comment, public comment later. Fine. Sorry, sorry, and no, that's that. okay. No, you're welcome to comment. Um, so I think that's pretty straightforward, and, and now we can um, to make a motion to open up for public comment. Somebody want to make that motion? I make a motion to open it up for public. Second. Second. Great. Right. Now, Holly, what's your question? I just wondered what which building that is on Main Street in terms of what store occupies that building. Let's go up to the site plan. I think it tells Isn't you that. that there. Well, it was on the photos, I think. It, it yeah, showed the picture. front of a building, but I couldn't tell which one it was. Which that's it. it. By the it. tattoo shop, it's close it's right to right next to the dentist. Dent is on the right side. And, uh, it's on the upper to Main Street then. Yes. yes. Walk yeah. on the mm -hmm. right side okay. on the curb. And so there's nothing behind those buildings that has 
an eating area or something else that would be actually be able to see what goes on in the back of that building. No, basically, I couldn't see it from the front. Well, and then and nobody's putting a, an eating area in the back or a deck in the back for any. No, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing in the back. It's just a simple small bakery in the front and bread and things. Okay. Now, I was just curious. No, that's a good question. Some places yeah. actively are now making. No, no, not that in the back. Absolutely not. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Holly, I'm sorry, just for the minutes, would you mind giving your full name and residential address, please? Sure. Oh, yeah. Holly. Mm -hmm. And the last name is two words V O N, Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Second part, B as in boy, E R N U T H. Okay. And 9 Liberty Street. Thank you, Holly. All right. Um, did we satisfy your question, or do you want to look at the site plan to see where they? No, I was just. I wasn't sure which which block of Main Street it was, and I I run an organization that is in the basement of the Open Door, so I'm very aware of the back side of Upper Main Street. Mm -hmm. And I, I see. Thank oh. you. Oh, oh no, no. Is this a different application? Oh, it might be. Okay, thank you. All right, so shall we, um, if you want to make a motion to close public comment and then vote? Anybody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. All right, thank you. Catherine, anyone want to second it? Second. second. Wonderful. So now we can vote. Um, shall we vote? Um, do I hear, um, do I just say, I forgot how we All do in this. favor. All in favor, thank you. Aye. Aye. I'm closing this public hearing. We're closing the public hearing. We're voting all in favor. I think I Aye, yes. What did you vote? In favor. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. You'll be you'll be getting a uh, certificate of appropriateness that I have to sign. That Maddie will tell you when we can get it. Well, so I think did, did you want to talk about the sign also? Oh, there's a sign. I'm sorry. Did was there a second part of it? It said the installation of a facade. Oh, I missed that then. Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, it does say that installation of facade sign. My, my apologies, I, I missed that. I don't recall seeing a drawing for that. So let's see where the sign is. Hold on, I gotta zoom. That's the sign? This is the sign. Is you that, is, are you the yeah. one with the sign? So would you like to present? Did you have something to show us? Yes. I have something that we made a material. Um, basically, this is the channel letters that we call. I just make one sign in the, in the small box so you can see it. Is it internally illuminated? It is internally illuminated. Individual letters in that case. And like I said, in this case, my sign is, uh, I make everything once. Okay. I, I'm sorry, you just have to give me a second here about the signs. I can't remember now if there's something in here about Intern, internally illuminated signs. And just for the record, I'm looking at the architectural design guidelines for signage. And I don't know whether anyone remembers what I'm trying to find. I do. I have Thank a question you. about the front of the building. Yeah, I wanted to see that, what it looked like on the front of the building. Do we have, a, I don't know if somebody knows whether we have internally illuminated signs. I thought we had a, um, a note about that. As far as I know, they uh, they don't they don't like channel. I mean, uh, light boxes anymore. Oh, uh, the light boxes. Light boxes. That's what I'm thinking. But these these chat that I believe they replace those boxes for these channel letters, which is because it's a small, it doesn't have that much line. Mm -hmm. uh, here it is. Different no, type of things, you know. Mm -hmm. We'll respect everything that's right there. Well, it says in historic districts, illuminate signs from the exterior rather than interior if lighting is required. Um, I, um, uh, these plastic, is this plastic? It is, it is a, I can illuminate if you no. like. Oh, you want to come over here? Yeah, plug it in. Wow, interactive. <laughs> right, wait, hold on. So these will, will be individual letters illuminated like this. Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. 
I did not uh, <laughs> check that before, and I don't know whether we have other signs like that on Main Street. Um, does anyone know? In your Sir, are you a sign? Are you from a sign company? Is that the name of your sign company? Yes. Ah, okay. Can I just ask everyone who's here to speak on behalf of this application? Could you just before you leave, write your name on the sign in sheet just so we'll have it for a minute, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, is, the, is your name Rodas? No, well, that's not yeah. my last name. Yes. Mr. Rodas, do you know if you've done any other signs on Main Street like that? I mean, I understand why somebody wants to have you make the sign like that. Um, I'm now. All right. I thought I said what I can say about it. It looks like this may very well be the first sign of that kind yeah. in the in the Main Street area. And I guess if we approve there's it, a, I look, uh, excuse me, yeah, sure, please. There's there another one on this? So let me let me show you. Yeah, please. I'm glad to see we're getting a bakery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance, is it a Colombian bakery by any chance? Uh, one of all kinds. Ah, <laughs> you love South American bread? Yeah, all kinds. Wonderful. Yeah. It is a Boost Mobile. Boost Mobile? Boost Mobile. They have a channel address. Which one? Sorry. It's Boost Mobile. A couple of doors down. Just kidding. Oh yeah, we do have that one. Is that internally? I guess it has to be the same one. Same one. Here, let me just pass this around. It looks like a. Yeah. All right. Anybody else want to check? Yeah, we have another one. Um, but in the Highland and in, in, in uh, Green Street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll start. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't remember if that's lit or not. That's all smart sign. No, all right. So there's a precedent on Main Street. Um, despite what I read, you know, the guy, um, we have a precedent. I don't find the design to be um sorry, know, what is the address of that precedent? Oh, the president? That's a good question. It's there. Uh, elsewhere. Or what is what is the name of the store? Two zero three Main Street. It's Health Smart. Okay. Seventy nine Main Street. Well, for Boost Mobile. Health Smart. Okay. Yeah, they'll all be in close proximity to each other. The three of them. Upper Main. Do you see it, um, Isaac? Yes. So, I mean, it is a precedent, but I don't know if it's a good precedent. Uh, all right. Well, we have two, two, um, two precedents, and. Um, What would be the option? What else could you propose to the owner if you don't follow the, um, those exceptions? The reason that you don't uh, accept these will be the lights. Yeah, internally illuminated. Internal. There's another way that we do the lights. It's instead of showing the lights, like right here, it shows in the back. Mm. Oh, the halo. Halo. Mm -hmm. That would be another mock-up to look at. I'm not really quite sure. And did you clear what that would look like, Mark? I'm not really sure what that would look like. I think it would be hard to read for the I bakery. I think it's about the yeah. tattoo plate that one that's very hard to read. The halo. And yeah. you just yeah. see yeah. like yeah, the shadows. I, I don't think those are very user-friendly. Yeah, I agree with that. Could you plug it in again, please? Sure. Don't bother me. 
The others are internally linked. Yes, it'll be longer than that, but it's essentially that's what it's going to be made out of. And it is, it looks to me very clear to be like the um, telephone and the health smart sign. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Turn the light ah, so can see it mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Um, again, these are guidelines. It's not the law. Dangerous. And um, you don't have an awning. You're not putting in an awning. There's no awning for the. There's no awnings in the, around there. Yep. And uh, no, no. Could, could you go back to the drawing, please? Okay. Where the elevation? Plan. Of the back, right? Yeah. yeah. You added somewhere. It's towards the top. Yes. I think it's the, actually the other the side of the So it's smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of things that I think the backlit is the, that are better. Well, first of all, will will the sign only be on when the bakery is open? Correct. Okay. So. Uh, I mean, it, it, the backlit sign is going to be better for for light pollution, and also for the tenants in the spaces above. You know, if it's a if it's a front lit sign, it's a sign with lights pointing at it. You know, it's gonna it's gonna throw glare into those apartments above, um, and it's because the, the sign is clearly attached to the building and not part of the building it, it i don't think it's taking away from the historic nature of the building yeah i mean i i don't it's, find it to be unattractive it's a separate, it's a separate thing um what's nice too i find about it, it doesn't have a big border around it um there's no like rectangular frame with some kind of other background of plastic maybe that would make it even bigger mm -hmm. So I don't, I mean, um, okay. How are you getting power to the sign? There is an existing power in there. There's a uh, box in the wall. Yeah. So there won't, so there'll be no exposed conduit. Okay. Okay, so to me procedurally, do I open it up for public comment and then we can decide to vote? So do we make a motion? I forgot to open up to public comment. Or yeah, did I just say, do I hear a motion open up for public comment? I make the motion open up. Okay, okay. second. I second. Right. So, is there anything? I don't know if anybody's in by Zoom. Holly, if you had anything you I was just talking. curious, what was that space used for the board? Yeah, it's now empty. What was it? What was what was in that space before you know? Before somebody rented? Um, before you guys are interested in renting it? Who was there? There was somebody there. We just had the name, but we never knew what, what it was before. It's been closed for a while then. Yeah, it's been closed for a while. Isn't it at the clothes store? It was the dentist, and then if you get so the, before that, it was like a clothes store. If I may ask, though, is oh, that relevant oh, to oh, the no, I'm not sure if the neighbors are the, the sign is going to have to sign the neighbors. Um, on side. Well, I guess we saw a picture of the storefront, and it doesn't look like. Anybody else? Dentist, dentist, to the drawing. Dentist, not the other one was. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that was ever anything because it a new thing. Was it auto? It was the auto parts. No, that was now. It used down. to be a different facade. It like it kind of like cracked. It was like a rounded window, and then they. It, they're only in the front half. I don't know if there was anything there. There might have been something in, in the back. Yeah, in the house. I was just, I just, you know, everybody's fighting for the attention of the customers, so I'm like wondering a little bit. Okay. All right. It, can I call? Do we? Do I make a motion to close for comment? Motion to close. Yes. So I hear a motion to close for comment, unless, of course, you had anything else. No, I'm just. I don't think anyone else is on Zoom. No. Okay. So do I hear a motion to close? I'll make the motion closed. And second. Second. Got second by Mark. Okay, so 
make a motion to vote. Dan? Yes. Just one thing. The last vote you took was to close the public hearing. You actually did not vote to grant the COA as to the uh, thing on the, the, what they're putting on the roof. So why don't you combine them both into this motion? Yes, you're right. I, I neglected the sign, yes. So the motion is to vote on the exhaust, which we had in, unofficially voted on, and the sign. So I hear a motion, oh, see, sir. Uh, I don't know if we make a point of procedure to uh, allow Steve to revisit this um, application, or since we have a quorum, to vote on it without Stephen Steve. Stephen is here, so if he wishes to participate, he can. Stephen, they've already gone through basically everything. Do you have any, I, I, my point is, do you have anything you wish to add with regard to either of the sign or the exhaust what they want to put onto the roof at this building. I don't. All right. So, so why don't you take your vote? Thank you. So we, I think we have a second. We second the, the motion to we, have a vote. We need a motion to approve the exhaust and the certificate okay. appropriateness for the sign. Somebody raised the motion to vote on the sign and the exhaust again. Somebody, okay. Catherine does. It. And second it. Second. Okay. So all in favor of the exhaust, just to repeat it formally. Aye. 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 And then the second part of it is about the sign. All in favor? Aye. 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 He said aye. Aye. Great. So now officially, both aye these are approved. Thank, Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank so you'll get those, as I said, a letter of certificate appropriateness after it's been typed up and um, thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, please make sure to sign in before you go. Okay. I'm looking forward to coming to your favorite. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having good documentation so we can yeah. see exactly yeah. what you were doing. Yes. Yeah. And then the mock up was very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. Okay. You're free to go. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Hey, uh, we also have continuing business of the board. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chair, if, if you'd like to, to move into that, or if you need it for a couple of questions. I'd like to um, know if somebody could um, raise the motion to discuss the amendment drafts that were circulated earlier. Um, and we would do that within the next half an hour. And uh, then at eight, approximately, we would adjourn. Is that something? I don't think you need a motion. You okay, say. then that's what I really like well. to do. So we have a half an hour left, and I thought that what we could do is um, focus on any number of things, and there could be a consensus here of what to talk about next. Um, there are a couple of amendments that we, I circulated to amend the design guidelines. And then there were uh, some amendments I circulated to amend the historic guide. And um, I suggest possibly that the one I think is the, the most um, intensive, perhaps that would be the one to discuss first, would be the Brandrup site. And if somebody has another opinion, uh, I'd like to hear that. I'd be happy to talk about anything else at the moment. Um, and I'd like to reserve possibly the last five, 10 minutes of the meeting to just tell you about an uh, exercise I took and you got the memo about it when I contacted other municipalities about HPC, how things are run. I can update you on that. So shall we talk about Brandra? If anybody wants to go, if we can call up can you call up the uh, memo I, I circulated? If you send it to me in an email, I cannot. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good lesson. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, it was a document, mm -hmm. it, attachment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change things. Well, I would have to log into my email right here. Oh, um, which I'm not going to do. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the future, I should bring a flash drive. Um, let's discuss it after. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Well, then I apologize that we can't um, uh, circulate the amendments, although possibly we can chat about it. Um, I 
I think it's very important if we amend the historic structure guide that we address certainly brand growth. It's, it's, I think, in many ways, the elephant in the room. You go to the page and you think the building's still there, it's all set. And there's a checkered history about it, maybe a bit more nuanced than what some people um, are aware of. I think it's certainly a great opportunity to set the record straight in that document. And um, I wasn't around in the HBC at the time all this was going on, uh, just to rehash. Uh, I don't know if Mark or Isaac are familiar with the history of it, but there's a um, historic building it, that is no longer existing. And uh, it has an interesting history. It was, I have some notes here. I, don't, I didn't bring my copy of it. Um, hold on a second. I can bring up the old version of the document. Well, oh, that'll be Yeah, but at least do that to show people what sure. we're talking about. Yep. Now we have page numbers, so that's great. Ta -da. Yeah, it's name great. badges, page numbers. What mm -hmm. could you ask? Sorry, the whiplash here. Yeah, that's part of it. Okay, that's not here anymore. And then you could go down to the next sheet, next page. Where another picture is, you know, okay. just look at the pictures. That's not here anymore, those pictures. <laughs> um, so the building, it's, a, it's an interesting history. I mean, from the research I could do, from reviewing um, past records and also it's a news article, is the um, the owner of the property, which is <clears throat> what's called Plateau Associates, got a demolition permit for the, all the buildings in 2008. And what's unclear, I, I think, I, I didn't see this printed anywhere, but apparently, even though they got the permit, there were some things that developer was supposed to do involving the federal government because it was, I believe, a fed, it's a federal landmark as well. And they didn't do that. But long story short, the demolition started in, um, uh, I think, 2011, uh, inspector issue. In 2011, the a uh, building inspector of Austin issued several violations on the condition of the building, deeming it unsafe. And I think shortly after that, the um, building was demolished under that 2008 demolition permit. So it was several years after the permit was obtained that they decided to begin that demolition. And it was done um, possibly on the QT, apparently, one of the neighbors who was on the HPC at the time was the one to alert the village that this demolition was proceeding. And they, um, I guess, stopped it. And I don't know how far along they were with it. And um, the problem was that in, uh, the, Oh, in, in 2008, the village declared the factory unsafe, and the village gave it a local designation in 2013. So it had been federally designated, but it hadn't been locally designated until 2013. And um, they never got a certificate of appropriateness for the demolition permit in 2008. And I believe that was because it's not in a district, a historic district. And if the building's only federally landmark, you don't need to go before HPC. Is that correct? I, Stuart's listening. Maybe he could chime in on that. Um, I think he's off at the moment. But that's my recollection. 
And I believe that is correct, Dan, that they did not. This building, you got this building and then you had the smaller building, which ultimately was taken down. That second building did receive a certificate of appropriateness. Uh huh. Okay. For the demolition? This, this, the smaller of the two buildings yeah. received a certificate of appropriateness issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals after it was denied by the then HPC. Okay, so the small building, which I think was the office, that mm -hmm. got that was demolished per code, so to speak. That was taken down pursuant to code and resolutions of various land use boards. That's correct. Okay, was demoed for a zoning appeal. Is that is that safe to say? That's that's essentially it. Well, yeah. I what it what what it was again was that they there was an application to historic preservation. HPC denied the certificate of appropriateness. There was an appeal of that denial to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals reversed and granted the certificate of appropriateness. Right. Okay. So the Zoning Board of Appeals overrode the HPC. They are the appellate board for the HPC. Yes. Okay. And that was in, I assume, um, after we had designated it as a local landmark. So it must have been sometime after, um, when did I say it was designated? It was designated in, in uh, 2013. So it must have been sometime after 2013 that we appealed and demoed it. That would be correct. It would probably have been sometime in 2017, I believe, maybe probably 2017 or 2018 is my recollection. Yeah. Okay. So that explains. So at least the sales office was done for reasons. Well, I guess it, it must be to understand why they decided to do it. I guess I could find the zoning appeal minutes um, from somehow in the file, and that would explain, I imagine, why they decided to grant the appeal. Is that that's correct, right, Stuart? You could look at the zoning board of appeal resolution if you wanted to do so, sure. Okay, fine. Okay, and um, so the building was knocked down. There was a, there's controversy about it. Some people believe that the main building was demolished without any kind of permission. Um, it's more nuanced in my view, in the sense that they had an 08 demolition permit. They didn't act on it until many years later. And um, I think there was some um, legal action, wasn't there, um, Stuart, with uh, Trustee Hernandez? He was the person um, who lived next to the building. Something there was there, there was, there were there were. I'll just say there was litigation that that former trustee Hernandez, former HPC member Miguel Hernandez, was involved with, that was somewhat peripheral to this, but did involve the uh, the, the properties. Yes. Okay, and I have another note here that in. 2015, Mayor Garrity uh, stopped the demolition. I guess, you know, these timelines are, um, it was kind of hard for me to put together accurately. Um, all right, so is it essentially then, maybe Stuart, you have some recollection, essentially to summarize it, if people want to know what happened to the building, the smaller building on a, um, an appeal to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but granted permission to lawfully demolish the small sales pavilion, well, I'll call it the sales office pavilion. And they had already essentially demolished prior to that anyway, the, the rest of the building, the factory. So the factory was at that part. The, that factory then, I think, Stuart, would you agree, if you could recall, that was a moot point at that time, right? By the time the office building uh, got the COA, the factory building was already down. Yeah. For, for years. Right. And um, there was essentially nothing. I mean, once they tore it down, there's not much as the village could do about it. And I guess, um, as you said, there was some litigation, but none of it was 
it was peripheral to the matter. The village wasn't trying to get them to reconstruct the building or anything like that. That is correct. Yeah, okay. So unless, um, I don't know, Catherine, maybe you had some personal recollection we um, could add. I'll redraft this. And... Yeah, I remember all of it. Can I ask Dan, if I might, what is, I know you want to put something in, but what exactly do you want to put in? Because it would be the only, I think, property we're listing in terms of that kind of stuff. So I'm just, I just, for my own edification, what do you, what's the, yeah, yeah, I mean, I might, what's the point? Well, the point is we, we go to the, we, go, we went to the trouble to produce this wonderful document, historic um, anyone, I think you're all familiar with it. Thanks. Yeah. So we have this wonderful documents. Oh, I didn't print it out, but you know what I'm talking about, the significant sites and structures. So it's a guideline. And everywhere in the website, at least with HBC, you know, we invite people to take a look and to acquaint themselves with all the historic property that supposedly HBC is protecting and wishes to be preserved. Um, and, and improved. And then all of a sudden you get to Brandreth, and I just find it embarrassing somewhat. Uh, at least yeah, from the that's state layer. That's, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And, and we're silent on it. And the other reason I believe we need to set the record straight is um, I know we had this brief conversation, I think a few meetings ago, Stuart, that I'm concerned it might set a precedent for whatever reasons. Um, maybe not from Brandeis, but there's some other property. And I think it's a great opportunity now to update this document, set the record straight, and keep people from just assuming possibly that the thing was just demolished without any involvement by the village or any any try to attempt to keep it going. And it, it's much more complicated history than I can tell you when I chat with people, they could recollect to me. Well, so, I, I, I think all I can say is this. I'm, I think it's, I'll be, I will personally be happy to look at whatever you put together. Uh, I just think it's very, this was a very difficult issue on, on many, many different levels. So uh, I know it sounds somewhat silly to say one or two paragraphs is not going to do it. So I think you have to be very, very direct in terms of it's not there, it was taken down. Uh, one was taken down pursuant to certificate of appropriateness. In fact, the pieces from that building are still being maintained uh, in, in the event that when they build what they're, they hope to build at some point, but the project is basically stopped. Uh, as to the other building, there was lengthy, uh, there were lengthy court hearings and ultimately the, uh, uh, the application against uh, the violations that were brought against the building were dismissed by the court. So. Uh, I think it's fair to say you're right. Both buildings are not there, uh, but uh, I just want it to be, I think it's important to point out that it's not, uh, it's a process that took many, many years, uh, you know, and, and did not put the village in a great light, didn't put the developer in a great light, uh, but, uh, you know, I think it is fair to tell people those buildings are not there. Uh, uh, I think there are other buildings in the historic guide which may not be there either. Oh, I think you're right, and this is the first one. Like I, I think it's the elephant in the room, so to speak. But there are, and there are other elements too. Like in the, uh, I had another um, amendment I circulated or about the Varian School, and I'm, I'm going to get off track a little bit, but I want to bring this up just to further explain my position, my opinion. You look at the before picture of the Varian School in our historic guideline. And to me, what was inex what's inexplicable, and it's still inexplicable because even though I tried to research this, I can't get an answer. The most prominent features of that building are these remarkable brick chimneys. And to me, they're a big signature feature that if this building were coming up today for conversion, I would think we'd all want to preserve, but they're gone. And I, I've done research a bit now, and I find out that the building, and maybe Stuart, you were around at the time working on this. Um, yeah, there it is. No, so that's the, sure. that's the, that's the, as it is now. Oh, you lost it. And if you go to a historic photo, if you go to a historic photo, which is below, I think. 
Yeah, black and white. You see the chimneys? Mm -hmm. And there might even be more. I don't know if you went around the other side of the building, maybe there's more. I've requisitioned, by the way, the condo conversion drawings. I'm just curious to see whether or not those chimneys existed when it was converted. And you'll see also that very big prominent dormer facing the west. And it's bigger than the others. And somehow we lost it. And um, so I'm just, I, I think anybody who looks at that picture and then looks at the existing shot and they see those prefabricated metal flues sticking up from the roof for chimneys, um, it would be a legitimate question in their mind. Hey, I guess it's okay to demolish chimneys. Now, maybe legally, that's not something they could, you know, take to the bank. But it just sort of, you know, lessens our, our mission to try to be consistent and to try to let people know as much as we can what our criteria are. So I think that this is an opportunity to explain to people, anybody who wonders, you know, where were we when this happened? Well, basically, I'll just give you what I know so far. That building was converted in 1988. And um, it didn't become historic landmark, local landmark, until I think 2014, 2015. And so possibly, you know, the, again, it's not to write an article that criticizes the village or, or possibly just defends the village, but it's just basically the fact that, you know, we, we took uh, pains to landmark it, but many, many, many years after, you know, we lost some very prominent features. And there's no mention of any of that in the designation meeting minutes that I could find. And I just think, you know, okay, if, if those chimneys didn't exist in 2000, in 1988, then there's nothing much to talk about other than to say, look, at, don't think that we allow chimneys to be demolished. But if those chimneys were there and they were demolished as part of the DOB plans, I think it's worth noting, I haven't written this yet, but I think it's worth noting that I believe that was then approved before we even had a historic preservation commission. And so that to me would be an example, if that's the case, of the value of historic preservation. That if we had had that up and running at that time, I think those chimneys, if they were there, would still be there. And that to me is like, you know, a very big example of the worthiness of um, HPC. Um, there are a couple other buildings. And again, it's just, a, you know, I, I, um, I also, have a picture I circulated of the uh, Ossidy National Savings Bank that I had mentioned a few meetings ago that has the black um, sort of painted wreaths above the upper windows. And I wondered why we ever, that ever happened. And I found out from going through the meeting minutes and the application of that building, which was back in, um, I think I wrote it down here. I think it was, uh, I don't have the date, but, uh, sorry, I don't remember the date, but it wasn't that long ago. Well, basically, if you look at the existing photo, and I emailed it to um, Jamie and Maddie, but I don't have it to show on the screen, those garlands were black then. So somehow between the existing photo when it opened, when the building was totally monochromatic, and the year that the developer decided to turn into condos, yeah, if you go down to there, you'll see the existing photo, the prior photo, historic photo. But Ossetian National Savings Bank? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. So you see the black garlands. Hold on, so, hold on. Okay. I'm sure everybody at home can see what we're seeing here. Yeah. And then you go down and you'll see a historic photo. Yeah, there it is. It's all monochromatic. And I found a picture that was part of the um, conversion drawings that show the building in terrible state of repair. That's another reason to add this photo. Again, you know, what's the value of historic preservation? Well, there that this is what the building looked like you know, many, many years after, you know, it became unoccupied. And maybe you would have thought from that picture, nobody could bring the building back, but it was brought back. And now I understand why we had those black wreaths, because apparently they existed there for some reason uh, prior to um, the conversion. And apparently without it being noted in the drawings or in the meeting minutes, 
I guess the idea was if they were there and just rusting away or in bad shape, we'll just repaint them. So from my point of view, that'll at least explain what happened. So in the future, if somebody looked at that historic picture and looked at this picture and said, hey, I want to paint stone on my building, we could say, well, you know, no. And not no just because we don't think it's a good idea, but no in the sense that there's a sense of precedent that the building had for some number of decades, apparently, had some kind of black ornamental covering over those windows. So I guess that's what was going through the board's mind when it was approved. I don't know if anybody, were you here at the time that building no. was approved? No. So I, I don't have a recollection and I never asked Joanne about it. So that's essentially what I'm thinking. And it's a very, it's true, Stuart, there are a lot of buildings and some of them may not even look as good as the pictures because it's 10 years old. I haven't professed to go through any, all of them. And it would be great if anybody on the commission wants to take a crack at some property, but these are the three buildings I think we could readily address and, you know, issue it. And then now we know what happened. And if we could get pictures, what, you, let me go ahead. With Brand Drift, um, have you spoken to Miguel or to Dana? No. They would have a very good knowledge of what happened with that. And I know Miguel was just up in arms with what had happened with um, Brand Drift. And I mean, there were people who were saying the building was in fine condition, I don't know, 20 years ago, or whatever. And it was just demolition by neglect. And they allowed it to get to a point where it almost then had to come down or something. There was something like that. Part of Miguel's issue was one morning he woke up, and half the building had been just knocked down. And he said, well, how did this even happen? Because right. we, you know, and then they, they were not supposed to do it. And I think that's what triggered, well, what you noted there. Uh, I think what Stewart said is also true too, that if you really get into a very comprehensive recap of the history, I guess maybe you could say it could be many, many pages or. Mm -hmm. A very detailed well, timeline. If, if the building is listed in there as historic to the city, to the village of Austin, before it gets demolished, doesn't it have to have HS, HPC approval? At the time it was demolished, they had on a 19, um, 2008 um, permit to do that. I know, is it 2008? Right, but how, how did they get it without an FPP? Well, yeah. um, that's a good question too. I, it seems I, like it seems like the whole history of what happened isn't as important as putting some kind of mechanism in place so it doesn't happen again. Well, that's certainly true, and that's part of why I think recapping the history as correctly as we can gives us some guidance mm -hmm. on that. Um, I didn't. I guess let me go back and check. Yeah. If anybody has any memory, but like you said, I could talk to um, Miguel I think Dana and, and Miguel would, would both have. I had talked to um, to um, Debbie um, Van Vander Van Steen. Van Steen, thank you. I talked to Debbie Deborah, and she gave me some input too. It, it certainly, I agree with you, by the way, Stuart, that anything I draft up will certainly need your. Uh, as I copied, I think the amendments to you anyway. It certainly would need your review because it had been you know, litigated to some extent. So it's a very controversial job. I think it's the first one to, to get sorted out and we go from there. Um, if no one had at, the, at, at this meeting has anything more um, that they could suggest or would like to do, uh, I'll find this, that's okay. And I'll just take it from there and try to find. You know, Dana lives in my block. If I run into her, it's so nice to you. Sure, that would be wonderful. History is. And then if you wanted to contact if she, you know, if she had a timeline, that would be great. Yeah. And I, so again, it, you know, it, it, it's not going to be, oh my God, you know, the, the village got screwed or, oh my God, the developer was screwed because he had a permit and he just followed through on it. I guess we just want to try to be as objective as we can and just, you know, point that, point out that, you know, the, the, the historic preservation process can be somewhat complicated, convoluted. But again, the value of historic preservation is to prevent this building or like that building from being demoed. And here's an example where mm -hmm. it happened. Yeah. And if there is an objective lesson we can put down about that, that's wonderful. That's you know what it should be all about. Yeah. Um, we tried to save the office. I mean, HPC didn't not do anything. Well, yeah, so you denied. So it. it's not. It doesn't. We can't save 
there are limits to what we can do. And I think that's the sad truth. Well, that's that's an example. Like you're, that's ex, that's a very good point. You know, we even want to put that in the guide to be honest like that. But that's what had happened. Well, I think it's very important to be in there because for things to truly be protected, it has to come from. It can't just be from us. It has to come from much higher. Well, I think um, I'll I'll go through the zoning board of appeals minutes. I think when did you did you say you remember more or less when that happened? It was two thousand eighteen. I believe it was 18 uh, because I I drafted the resolution. So I'm pretty sure it was 2018. Okay, so I find that and we'll see, you know, they have to state a rationale for granting the um, appeal, right? Uh, there should be something in the resolution. You have to, you know, you can, if you can get the resolution, you, it should, it should state in there. There was a, I remember there was a, uh, was there, was there was a meeting, it was a public hearing, it was uh, all open, so uh, the resolution should be there. Uh, it may be one of those resolutions that when we had the problem with our computers, I may not have it here, but I would assume that Jamie Kane would certainly have the, uh, uh, the, the COA that was granted by uh, the ZBA. So there's something I, you know, I tried, I spent some time going through all this and I never heard of this thing being appealed, so you know, it's great to be able to chat with people, I have some knowledge of it. And I think that would make, you know, all we're trying to do is just to present the facts. What you said, Catherine, certainly is the bleak reality that if somebody wants to appeal, I guess they can. Um, it would be good if there was some objective reason why the appeal was granted. Um, I don't know what it might have been. Um, you know, we could state that too. I mean, we're not trying to relitigate. I think, Stuart, I think maybe what you're telling me, at least the way I'm listening to it, and I, I agree with you, if this is what you're saying, is we're not trying to relitigate um, the whole history of this thing and, you know, make it something controversial. We're just trying to give people a more balanced view of what really happened. Because I've heard very may different... I be, may I be blunt? Uh, with, as, a, as regards to uh, a Brandreth Pill Factory, you will never be able to do that. You will be able to explain what the facts are. You will never be able to do what you just said. I can, having lived through it, not going to happen. <laughs> all right. Well, if all we do is show a timeline and a paragraph or two, it just explain. That's fine. I'm just, I'm just telling you in terms of trying to shape hearts and minds. <laughs> oh no. I, well, I, your point's a good one. I, I, I don't think I was trying to do that so much as just put the facts out there so that when I chat with somebody or somebody tells me what happens or tells somebody else what happened with Brandra, to the extent they go in this guide, at least they'll have, you know, the facts. Yep. No, I got you. I got you. And there are plenty of other properties. By the way, are there any other properties you're aware of maybe we could focus on, Stuart, just from your recollection in the guide that maybe aren't here anymore or? I would, I would have to look through that again. Uh, I'm just sort of looking as I'm talking to you. I'm just going through all this. Uh, okay, now that's that's a different certificate of appropriateness. So I'm going through my old certificates of appropriateness for for Brandreth. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, just looking to see what I've got and I don't have. If there is anything, whenever you get a chance, you want to make us aware of it. That would be great. I'll track it down. If anything has the interest or the time to flip through the guide. Maybe you live near a property that's in the guide. Maybe it doesn't look as good as it did before. Maybe it's not there anymore. Or maybe it's been added on to. That would be another thing. You know, if there's an addition to it, it'd be nice to update the description. If it's important enough that it's in the description, I think it should be important enough that we, you know, keep it as current as we can. It's been over 10 years. Okay, so I think that's all we do. Next, for the next uh, meeting, I can bring, uh, I'll talk to Maddie about how to present the data and we can show it on the screen. So just in another minute or so that we have left, um, I circulated, I think you probably saw it, uh, maybe you saw it in the email or maybe you haven't read it yet or looked at it, but I compared how often does HPC with about 10 other communities. And uh, Basic, I'll just tell you the other communities. Croton, Irvington, Mount Kisco, the town of Austin, Peekskill, Sleepy Hollow, Terrytown. And for the heck of it, I also looked at Saratoga Springs, Hudson, and Williamsburg, Virginia. 
And the reason, um, it, it, you'll see there's a, if you're interested, you'll see how many communities really don't have HPC. In fact, the only other community that has um, HPC is Peaks, is Peekskill and Hudson, New York. And ironically, Hudson, New York doesn't have a Board of Architectural Review. They just have HPC. But there are only 5,000 people. Peekskill, of all the communities adjacent to us, which is what I mentioned earlier, forget about Saratoga Springs, Hudson, and Williams, Williamsburg, Peekskill, ironically, is about our size, around 24,000 people. And they have an HPC, but they call it um, a Landmarks Preservation Board. And they also have a planning board uh, that reviews um, individual, uh, that reviews planned developments. They really have no facility for looking at individual buildings. So they don't have as much of a design review process as we have in Austin. Um, I spoke with the head of H, their HPC, who's an architect. Um, I wrote the name down somewhere here, but I don't have it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Very nice woman. And one other thing we, ch we chatted about, you know, the um, challenges she has. It's essentially what the challenges we have. Um, a lot of times, you know, somebody will buy in a historic district or rent in a historic district and they haven't been really informed about the need to have things reviewed by the board and it causes a lot of issues because there hasn't been full disclosure. And maybe that happens here. I think to some extent it probably does. One thing quickly though that I, I got from this, they don't have continuing education as a requirement. And I mentioned that to Manny Gazzotta. Uh, and I said, you know, in, in all fairness, that you know, we have trouble getting members of the board on our commission. Big skill does too, by the way. Um, but we have a continuing ed requirement, and um, perhaps it's not so important. I mean, the only other HBC around us doesn't have them. And so he said he would kind of like shop around the idea of possibly eliminating that for HPC. Uh, I mean, I don't know how any of you feel about it. I, I as an architect, has to do it anyways. It's not a big deal for me, but possibly for other people, maybe that's a stumbling block to possibly join the commission or to stay current. I mean, to be on the commission and not stay current with uh, continuing education is beside the point. You know, if we're going to have a requirement, then, you know, people should, mm -hmm. should I, or I'll get rid of it. I don't mind getting rid of it. Is it, is it something you find uh, onerous? Well, or? I, I don't necessarily think I find it onerous. When I do take it, it's, you know, the courses I've taken are interesting, but sometimes it's kind of fun. And I think there'll be some more guidance as to resources that are there. That we can. Well, interesting. Jamie circulated a seminar, and I didn't, by the way, go, Mark. I had a problem with okay. Wendy's, so I missed it. But the seminar that Jamie offered to us at no cost was about land use, I think. And Westchester well, Municipal yes. Planning Federation. They and I, that's yeah. the other issue that I have with this, which is that the Village of Asani for Historic Preservation will accept a course on land use planning, which frankly, I don't think is very pertinent to historic preservation. Now, the continuing that I took, um, from a company called Brent Vector for last year was about, you know, historic colors, uh, roofing, and foundation systems, you know, stuff that directly related, perhaps in a more technical way, to historic properties. And that to me would be what I would imagine continuing ed for HPC should be. But if land use planning or subdivision, whatever else, water runs, because those are the kind of classes that satisfy continuing ed, if that could if that satisfies continuing ed for HBC, I don't frankly see the point of it. Um, it's nice to do. I mean, you know, if, if you want to be able to take the class, why not? But is it really something that we should, you know, make a requirement of? I, I don't think so. Dan, right now, it's a statute that requires it by the village code. So that's something that will have to be that we have to be changed by local law. And I apologize to everyone in the audience. As Maddie knows, I have about 20 local laws that I am working on right now. So I, I simply will not get to it immediately. So folks, you'll have to work on 
<laughs> You'll have to find your courses. That's the best I can tell you. Well, the bug's been planted. At least maybe one day in the future it'll be acted on. I mean, so that's that's what I the most actionable thing is. That is the most actionable thing I gleaned at the well, moment from what, this One thing maybe we could do is if we find it, because like two years ago I got this trove of classes by the National Register in New York State, and it's free, and um, they were they were excellent. They were really good. Well, that's great but to circulate. I've done yeah. it, just circulate, but maybe that's something we could all do if we find stuff yeah. that's of mm -hmm. interest and, sure. and relevant, not you know like. What you would yeah, mentioned, and, and, um, and just also, circulate it, and that would certainly help. You know, trying instead of having to, mm -hmm. uh, where do I go find this? You know, mm -hmm. and there are um, architecture firms and other things that have sort of, I think, pro bono stuff on on various sites as well that I have found that yeah, to get a one, little one certificate firm. printed out. Yes, yes. SGI is a firm. They have yeah, they, so they my, have like lunch and learns that are. I I, I went one they had done about the different things they had done to restore a uh, an old Frank Lloyd Wright building that the Massachusetts winters were just tearing apart. And so they, they showed what they had done with the roofing system so that it had a proper ice and water shield and a couple other things, but didn't affect the the um historic character of the building whatsoever. So I, that was that was useful. I, I just I'm sorry to interrupt Mark, but I said we be done at eight. It's almost oh, okay. maybe ten right. after. So we could to your point, to it up. To your point, Stephen. Yes, I would circulate that course if you can. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. That's I said great. this is great. I mean, just I know we yeah. got to get out of here, but you know, one of the things was um, you know, you might look at something and say that's worth preserving. Um, this is part of the, the lecture. And they gave a hundred reasons why, or not a hundred, but a number of reasons why perhaps this is too far gone mm -hmm. for that. And yet something that you might look at and go, wow, well, that's a teardown. Well, no, because this and this and this and this and this are all preserved and intact. Mm -hmm. This does say something about the time and the period. Okay. So it, it was really, really very good. Let me pull it up. And yeah, we'll that, was, that sounds down. great. Yeah. 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 All right, because we're going to still have this law. And obviously, it's not going to be acted on anytime soon. All right, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Second. Motion is accepted and meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.